Good day everyone! Welcome to TLE Class, Agricultural Crop Production. Today, we are going to continue our lesson in processing farm wastes. Types of waste. Waste can be classified into five types of waste which is commonly found around the house. This includes liquid waste, solid rubbish, organic waste, recyclable rubbish, and hazardous waste. Liquid waste. These are commonly found both in household as well as in industries. This waste includes dirty water, organic liquids, wash water, wash detergents, and even rainwater. Liquid waste can be classified into point and non-point sourced waste. All manufactured liquid waste is classified as point and non-point source is water pollution which occurs from many diverse areas of human activity within watersheds. Solid rubbish. This includes variety of items found in your household along with commercial and industrial locations. Solid rubbish is commonly broken down into following types. Plastic waste. This consists of bags, containers, jar, bottles, and many other products that can be found in your household. Plastic is not a biodegradable, but many types of plastic can be recycled. Plastic should not be mixing your regular waste. It should be sorted and placed in your recycling bin. Paper or card waste. This includes packaging materials, newspaper, cardboards, and other products. Paper can easily be recycled and reused, so make sure to place them in your recycling bin or take them to the closest recycling depot. Tins and metals. This can be found in various forms throughout your home. Most metals can be recycled. Consider taking these items to a scrapyard or your closest recycling depot to diagnose all the waste type properly. Number 3. Organic Waste This includes common household waste. All food waste, garden waste, manure, and rotten meat are classified as organic waste. Over time, organic waste is turned into manure by microorganisms. However, this does not mean that you can dispose them anywhere. Recyclable Rubbish This includes all waste items that can be converted into products that can be used again. Solid items such as paper, metals, furniture, and organic waste can all be recycled. Instead of throwing these items in with regular waste, which then ends up in landfills, place them in yellow recycling bin or take them to your local recycling depot. Hazardous waste. This includes all types of rubbish that are flammable, toxic, corrosive, and reactively. This item can be harm you as well as the environment and must be disposed of correctly. Four types of hazardous waste. Number one, ignitability or something flammable. Examples are liquids with flash point, solids that can cause a fire and sustain combustion and oxidize, and compressed gases. Corrosivity or something that can react or decompose. Corrosive substances are destructive materials that pose great risk to people, property, and the environment such as hydrochloric acid, phosphoric acid, nitric acid, sulfuric acid, sodium hydroxide, and corrosive cleaning agents. A corrosive is something liquid with pH of less than or equal to 2 or greater than or equal to 12.5. It has the ability to corrode steel. Reactivity. Reactive wastes are unstable under normal conditions. It can cause explosion, toxic fumes, gases, or vapors. Examples are peroxide solutions or hypochlorite solutions or solid. Toxicity. Poisonous materials pose a threat to groundwater in which can have long-term effects to human health and the environment. Examples are solvent-based paint, pesticides and other garden chemicals, water oils, petrol and kerosene, syringes, and other hospital wastes. Classification of waste. Sources of waste can be classified into four types, industrial waste, commercial waste, domestic waste, and agricultural waste. Industrial waste are waste generated by manufacturing or industrial processes. 
commercial waste is waste from premises used mainly for the purpose of a trade or business or for the purpose of sport, recreation, education, or entertainment. Domestic waste is known as household or residential waste. And agricultural waste is waste produced as a result of various agricultural operations such as field wastes, animal wastes, and agro-industrial wastes. Types of Waste Disposal Number 1. Recycling Recycling is the process of collecting and processing materials that would otherwise be thrown away as trash and turning them into new products. Number 2. Animal Feed This convert food waste into animal feed. Number 3. Biological Reprocessing this process of waste disposal is only applicable to those of organic nature like plants, food scraps, and paper products. Organic matter going through a biological decomposition process forms mulch or compost which later can be used for agricultural purpose. Number 4. Incineration It is a waste treatment process that involves the combustion of organic substances contained in waste materials. Incineration and other high-temperature waste treatment systems are described as thermal treatment. Incineration of waste materials converts the waste into ash, flue gas, and heat. And last type of waste disposal is landfill. A disposal site where solid waste such as paper, glass, and metal is buried between layers of dirt and other materials in such a way as to reduce contamination of the surrounding land. Rules in Handling of Hazardous Materials Rule number one, follow all established procedures and perform job duties as you've been trained. Rule number two, be cautious and plan ahead. Think about what could go wrong and pay close attention to what you're doing while at work. Rule number three, always use the required PPE. Inspect it carefully before it's used to make sure it's safe to use. Replace worn out or damaged PPE. It won't provide adequate protection. Rule number four, make sure all containers are properly labeled and that the material is contained in an appropriate container. Don't use any material not contained or labeled properly. Report any damaged containers or eligible labels to your supervisor right away. Rule number 5. Read all labels and the Material Safety Data Sheet or MSDS before using any material to make sure you understand hazardous and precautions. Rule number 6. Use all materials solely for the intended purpose. For example, don't use solvents to clean your hands or gasoline to wipe down equipment. Rule number 7. Never eat or drink while handling any materials and if your hands are contaminated, don't use cosmetics or handle contact lenses. Rule number 8. Read the labels and refer to MSDS to identify properties in hazardous chemical products and materials. Rule number 9. Store all materials properly, separate incompatibles, and store in ventilated, dry, cool areas. Rule number 10. Keep you and your work area clean. After handling any material, wash thoroughly with soap and water. Clean work surfaces at least once a ship so that contamination risks are minimized. And last, rule number 11, learn about emergency procedures and equipment. Understanding emergency procedures means knowing evacuation procedures, emergency reporting procedures, and procedures dealing with fires and spills. It also means knowing what to do in a medical emergency if co-worker is required or overcome by chemicals. Environmental Laws Presidential Decree PD-1152, the Philippine Environmental Code, which took effect in 1977, provides a basis for an integrated waste management regulation stating from waste sources to methods of disposal. PD-1152 has further mandated specific guidelines to manage municipal waste and sanitary landfill and incineration and disposal site in the Philippines. 
In 1990, the Philippines Congress enacted the Toxic Substances, Hazardous and Nuclear Wastes Control Act, commonly known as Republic Act or RA-6969, a law designed to respond to increasing problems associated with the toxic chemicals and hazardous and nuclear waste in the country. The Act seeks to protect public health and environment for unreasonable risks posed by these substances in the Philippines. Apart from the basic policy, Rules and Regulations of Republic Act 6969 Hazardous Waste Management must also comply with the requirements of other specific environmental laws such as PD-984, Air Pollution Control Law, PD-1586 or Environmental Impact Assessment System Law, RA-8749 or Clean Air Act, and RA-9003 or Ecological Solid Waste Management Act and their implementing rules and regulations. Major Environmental Laws Clean Air Act or Republic Act No. 8749, otherwise known as the Philippine Clean Air Act, is a comprehensive air quality management policy and program which aims to achieve and maintain healthy air for all Filipinos. Endangered Species Act the Endangered Species Act of 1973 is a key legislation for both domestic and international conservation. The Act aims to provide a framework to conserve and protect endangered and threatened species and their habitats. Montreal Protocol It is an international treaty designed to protect the ozone layer by pacing out the production of numerous substances that are responsible for ozone depletion. Clean Water Act The law aims to protect the country's water bodies from pollution from land-based sources, industries and commercial establishments, agriculture and community household activities. Republic Act 9003 or Ecological Solid Waste Management Act of 2000. This law aims to adapt a systematic, comprehensive, and ecological solid waste management program that shall ensure the protection of public health and environment. The law ensures proper segregation, collection, storage, treatment, and disposal of solid waste through the formulation and adaptation of best eco-waste products. Republic Act 6969 Toxic Substances, Hazardous and Nuclear Waste Control Act of 1990 The law aims to regulate, restrict, or prohibit the importation, manufacture, processing, sale, distribution, use and disposal of chemical substances, and mixtures. It likewise prohibits the entry, even in transit, of hazardous and nuclear wastes and their disposal into the Philippine territorial limits for whatever purpose, and to provide advancement and facilitate research and studies on toxic chemicals. Reuse, Reduce, and Recycle Reuse is the action or practice of using an item, whether for original purpose, or conventional reuse or to fulfill a different function or creative reuse. While reduce means purchase products that require less packaging or to limit the waste you are producing. And recycle means turning an item into raw materials which can be used again, usually for a completely new product. Process of converting waste into reusable materials. Reducing and reusing products cuts down on manufacturing pollution just as the use of recycled instead of virgin materials prevents pollution in industrial processes. Households can save money by reusing materials and products and by practicing smart shopping habits that reduce waste. Recycling two glass bottles saves enough energy to boil water for five cups of tea. Less waste going to landfill will reduce releases of methane a greenhouse gas that contributes to climate change. Recovering energy from waste means less use of fossil fuels. Safety signs and safety label requirements. Safety signs require the use of safety signs to indicate specific hazards that without identification may lead to accidental injury to workers and or the public or lead to property damage. Keep signs simple and concise, but also make sure they communicate sufficient information so that the message is clear. 
Danger signs. These indicate an immediate hazard which if not avoided will result in death or serious injury. Danger signs should be limited to the most extreme situations and signify that special precautions are necessary. Messages are printed in black or red letters on a white background or white letters on black background. Warning signs. This represents a hazard level between caution and danger. Warning indicates a hazardous situation which if not avoided could result in death or serious injury. Caution signs indicates a potentially hazardous situation which if not avoided may result in minor or moderate injury. Caution signs are used in areas where potential injury or equipment damage is possible or to caution against unsafe practices. Caution is written in black letters on a yellow background and is preceded by safety alert symbols. The message and safety symbols in the body of the sign are printed in black. Biological hazard signs. This shall be used to signify the actual or potential presence of a biohazard and to identify equipment, containers, rooms, materials, experiment animals, or combinations thereof which contain or are contaminated with viable hazardous agents presenting a risk or potential risk to the well-being of man. Biohazards can be black, fluorescent orange, or orange-red color. Notice signs. Provide general information that is important or relevant to a building, an area, a machine, or equipment. The heading notice should be in white italic letters on a blue background. Notice signs should never include the safety alert symbol. The body of a sign is white and the message is in blue or black lettering on a white background or white lettering on a black background. General safety signs. These are used to provide notices of general practice and rules relating to health, first aid, medical equipment, sanitation, housekeeping, and suggestions relative to general safety measures. Message and safety symbols should be printed in green or black on a white background. Signs may also be printed in white on a green background. Signs should never include the safety alert symbol. Fire safety signs are used to indicate the location of emergency firefighting equipment. The message and safety symbol are printed in red on a white background or in white on a red background. Fire safety signs are not used to show the direction of fire equipment but rather its immediate location. Admittance signs With no admittance signs, you can warn people that they are not allowed to enter the area without permission or unless authorized. Admittance messages may be on a general safety sign with any header. Safety symbols Signs and labels may include safety symbols, often called pictograms, pictorials, or glyphs. Safety symbols can portray required actions, consequences, explicit direction, or the effects of interaction with certain chemicals, machines, and other hazards. The 5S of Good Housekeeping The 5 in a 5S Workplace Organizational and Housekeeping Methodology refers to 5 steps. 5S is a reference to a list of 5 Japanese words translated into English. This is an approach of organizing and managing the workplace and workflow with the intent of improved efficiency by eliminating wastes, improving flow of production, reducing process delays. Standardized and sustained refers to methods used to ensure that safety and well housekeeping is well maintained. Sayri or sort. Sort items that are useful from items that no longer use. Throw away items that are useless. Useless items that are not yours should return to owner. Number 2. Seiton or Segregate This means items should be in proper order for easy use and safe keeping. Say so or shine To clean your workplace so that there would be no dust anywhere, it means to make everything shiny clean. 
say ketsu or standardized. This means maintaining high standards of housekeeping and cleanliness. And last is shitsuke or self-discipline. This means spontaneous practice of 5S. Thank you for watching. I hope you have learned something today. See you on our next lesson.